Lee Higginbotham created this game as part of a annual visitor's day that occurred at Brookhaven every year when people would come in and see what was happening at Brookhaven. And normally the exhibits that were available for people to see were just posters and you know things, uh, equipment, static exhibits. He wanted, he wanted something interactive where the people would be able to, to actually do something. The, the division had an analog computer, Donner analog computer that they used for solving mathematical problems. And it came with a little instruction book that showed how to program it to simulate a ball bouncing or a ballistic missile trajectory or things like that. So he, he decided, well, it, this sounds like we could put together a tennis game and make it interactive where two people could play. So uh, he sketched up the idea for the game in about two hours and gave it to one of the engineers in the, in the division, Bob Dvorak, and took him, uh, I guess, about two days to lay out the, the design. And uh, they spent another uh, few days putting it together and debugging it. It was a big hit at the visitor state. People were, people were lined up out the door of the, of the gymnasium where, where, the, where it happened to be set up. Brookhaven was celebrating its 50th anniversary uh, in 1997, and as part of the celebration, each of the divisions and, and departments in the laboratory was asked to come up with a, a project that uh, you know, would be part of the celebration. So I, I thought it would be interesting to uh, go back in our archives and find something that we could recreate in the spirit of 50 years ago. There was one picture that existed of the original game that was taken in 1958. And the game is just a very small part in the corner of that picture. So we tried to figure out what kind of equipment was there and how it was set up. So we put together a board with the relays on it. We knew there, there are several relays in, in this. And we laid out the board with the relays and connected it to our simulated integrated circuit computer and found an old oscilloscope that was approximately from the 1960s and put it together and took us about, uh, it took three of us each about three man months to, uh, to get this thing going. You know, one of these problems where you, where you start and you, you've got to finish because somebody did it once and you can do it. So we tried and we, we, we did it. Willie Higginbotham, in, in his notes, uh, he was asked, you know, why didn't you patent? patent it and you, you could be a, a billionaire now if you'd done that. And uh, his response was, well, the patent would have belonged to the U.S. government at the time and it, and it wouldn't have been any financial gain for him. But he, he really didn't feel that what he had done was such an innovation because all the circuits that, that he programmed in were in this little instruction book. So, so there, there was nothing really new. Uh, about uh, you know, wiring these these things together to, to perform these functions. Oh, oh, yeah. the 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 other the other reason why uh, uh, Willie Higginbotham didn't feel uh, it didn't occur to him to to really patent the game was that uh, the uh, equipment that goes into the game weighs uh, several hundred pounds. So it's not something that you can move around very easily. And in fact, to, you know, to get it here, we had to load it in the back of a station wagon and, and, uh, and, and, and move it. Tennis for Two was an, was an interesting sidelight. Uh, it was uh, done uh, on a lark. It was done with the purpose of amusing people, giving them something, something to do that would bring science to them and uh, they could get a real feel for the capabilities of what science could do.